the theories of evolution. This is the core. Now it, it's like we are starting what you call evolutions. Number one. Uh, the first one is Lamarck's theory, which we call the Lamarckism. This guy was there uh, in, in 1744 to 1829. No one was born by this time and no one was thought of. His theory, if you look at it, uh, many people try to criticize it, but for me and the other scientists, they see that his theory was very important because it gave us a, a benchmark, the, the, how um, life is evolving from different organisms. Number two is um, Darwinism, or um, uh, Darwinist theory. Uh, Charles Darwin is from 1809 to 18. Uh, 82. These guys, uh, they did a great job. If they didn't do the great job they did, we wouldn't have seen that evolution. Why is evolution taking place the same way it is happening? So let's look at the um, uh, uh, Lamechism. This guy is, was uh, was a Christian, eh? Christian, uh, like a bishop. Yeah, this guy was very clever because he started the story. Okay, this guy says that. Number one, this guy, Jean Baptiste de Lama, started uh, his life from uh, 1744 to 1829. How many years are those? Almost 70 something years, I think so. If uh, uh, I'm not uh, mistaken, I'm not a mathematician. Uh -huh. This guy, Lama, used the laws, two laws. The first law is the law of use and uh, disuse of, 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 of a structure, law of use and this use of a structure. Number two, he also used uh, the law of uh, inheritance of acquired uh, characters. So he said that in the law of use and this use of a structure, organisms, uh, an organism uses a structure or organ more frequently, it becomes bigger and developed, uh, uh, sorry, becomes bigger or it becomes better developed. If you use the structure, it becomes um, uh, more developed. The more you use the structure, the more it becomes bigger and stronger. And then that is the use. If you use the structure, it becomes bigger and stronger. If you don't use the structure, it becomes smaller and smaller and finally disappears. Eh? Quote me right. Not all structures. There are some structures which you don't need to... Uh, use and disuse just make them disuse don't use them the more use the structure so you have to use the structures that's what he says the more use the structure the more becomes bigger and stronger if you don't do that it becomes smaller and then finally disappears so he says that as organisms use a structure or organ more frequently yes the more use the structure this eh? at first it was like this so now this started the, the, the grass was low so the one uh this grass it if the grass was like this this uh giraffe will, will not uh develop its neck but if the grass were like this and then the drought came up and then you find out that the only grass is at or oh, the foliage is at uh, on the top of the tree so now the giraffe starts to strain uh stretch their necks so when they stretch the neck as they stretching the neck eh, the neck becomes longer and longer and longer. So it's, it's using this part. It's using this part so that at least uh, the neck is growing and growing. And then this character does not stop there. It is being inherited to the next generation. So if you see it, it says that the structure is being used. If you look at this, the structure is being used frequently as it, it gets the food uh, on the top of the tree so frequently many times so it becomes better developed so it becomes longer if you look at it this and this so now it becomes longer and then it becomes bigger so that now the, the offsprings they have the same kind of character for example if you're a bodybuilder yes and then uh, you make muscles you want to have a kid the kid is going to be born with the muscles yeah? the muscles the kid doesn't need to go to the gym. No, 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 no. He's going to be born with the muscle. The more you use the structure, the more it becomes bigger and stronger. And then these characters are being transferred to the next generation. That's what he says. However, uh, we, we will see that even you, you see that there are some uh, uh, loopholes which are there. But uh, 
it gave us at least a basis how to to explain these uh, ideas. And then we are saying that if the organ does not use, now that this is the disuse, this is the use, this is the disuse, does not use a structure or organ frequently, they become smaller, less developed, or reduced in the size and may disappear altogether. So if, if you remember when you are talking about the theories of evolution, we talked about embryology. And then you say that we, we had a tail. And even if, if you go to bath, you find out that you had a tail. If you, you try to check uh, behind your, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, you find out that you have a tail. But because we didn't use that tail, it became smaller and smaller and then disappeared. That's how Lamanka is trying to explain that. But if you don't use the structure, it becomes smaller and smaller and finally uh, disappears. So uh, that is the law of use and disuse. And then the law of inheritance of acquired character, that's the number two. He says that characters developed during the life uh, of an individual can be passed on to the next generation. For example, uh, like now you see that these giraffes, what happened? The giraffe was stretching the neck. So they, this giraffe will give rise to this. This neck will be longer, as is longer, so it passes the genes from here again to the next generation. The characters which you obtain during lifetime, you pass them to the next generation. If you get an accident and then the, the, the leg is cut, then you're going to produce a baby who is not having a leg. That's how, what he says, that the characters you obtain during the lifetime, you pass them to the next generation. Uh, so that is Lamarck's theory. They can ask you, describe how Lamarck explained uh, how did the giraffe came up with long necks. Describe how Lamarck explained how tigers came up with uh, stripes. Describe how Lamarck explained how uh, elephants came up or came up with uh, long trunks. You can use law of use and disuse and then the inheritance of acquired character. Make sure that when you're explaining, you have those uh, two there. Here is a question. Let's look at it. Account. Write an account showing how Lamarck would explain the development of longer necks in the modern giraffe. Five marks. Here is the memo. Number one, all giraffe had short necks. We saw them that all of them had short necks originally. That's how we mark now. We give you a tick. All giraffes had short necks. It means that there was no variation among these giraffes. All the giraffes had short necks. That's number one. Number two, the gir these giraffes frequently stretch their necks. As they are stretching their necks, yes, they are trying to reach the, the food on the trees. Yes. Number three, they did this to reach the leaves that were available only uh, higher up on the trees. So, so as they're stretching their necks, they are trying to get the food on the trees. Uh -huh. As a result, their necks became longer. Their necks became longer. Yes. And then the characteristics now, that is the law of use. From, from here up to here, that is the law of use and disuse. Yes. And then now, the giraffes have uh, obtained the long necks. But you want to to pass these next these these characters to the next generation. He says that the, uh, the the characteristics of the long necks acquired in this way were passed to uh, were passed on to the next generation. So this point proves the inheritance of the acquired characters. So all giraffes had short necks, meaning that there was no variation. Number two, the giraffes frequently stretched their necks. As they stretch their necks, uh -huh. they uh, did this. Why did they stretch their necks? They did this to reach the leaves that were uh, available on higher, uh, on, on only higher up on the trees. And then, as a result, the necks became longer. Yes. And then, these characteristics are uh, meaning that the long necks uh, acquired during lifetime were passed on to the next stage generation. So now, after that, eventually, all the giraffes had long necks. That's how he explained how did the giraffe came up with long necks. But if you look at Darwin, 
down his theory, he explained it using a different angle. But there are some points at least which are a little bit similar. It means that Darwin used the idea of Lamarck to at least to develop the theory of uh, Darwinism using natural selection. Explain the Lamarck's theory. Why? Explain why Lamarck's theory was rejected. Explain. If you look at it, um, if you look at it, do you think Lamarck's theory is correct? It could be correct in some instances. Is it that when you use the structure, it becomes bigger and stronger? Yes, some structures they become bigger and strong. Eh? If you look at um, if you look at the mouth, yes, every day you use your mouth. Does it become bigger and stronger? Does it? Oh, if it becomes bigger and stronger, then it means that his theory is right. But if you look at uh, the people who are doing uh, the, the muscle building, if, if, if you go to the gym, start to use uh, the muscles, you do the activities, do you have the muscles? Yes, you, the more you use the structure, the more it becomes bigger and stronger. Eh. But do you pass on all the characters you obtain during lifetime? No, no, you don't pass all the characters. The physical, the, the, the phenotypic um, um, characters you obtain, you don't pass them to the next generation unless there is uh, a mutation. So basically, that's it. Uh, we are saying that he says that, number one, there is not enough evidence to show that acquired characteristics are inherited. It's not that when you, 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 you obtain a character during your lifetime, then you pass it to the next generation. It's not like that. Number two, Organisms do not evolve because they want to evolve. They, Lamaka says that if the giraffe wants to get the long neck, so it just has to stretch, 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 then it becomes longer, the neck becomes longer. If it wants to have a shorter neck, then the neck becomes uh, short, 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 then you get... If you want to become tall, you just have to jump, 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 jump like a, a frog, and then uh, you become tall. So if you are tall and then you want to become short, you just have to squeeze yourself, then you become... So that's what he's saying. That, and then you produce kids who are tall, or you produce kids who are short. If you come, you 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 want a character, you just have to practice it, and then you get it. So we say that no, organisms don't evolve because they want to. No, 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 no. They just have to evolve because of natural selection. Then number two, uh, organisms don't evolve because they want to evolve. No, 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 no. Organisms evolve because of other factors. So uh, basically, uh, that's it. Okay, they're saying that Darwinism. So we have seen Lamarckism versus now Darwinism. Let's look at Darwinism. We say that Charles Darwin uh, is one of the great scientists. So this guy existed in, in 1809 to 1882, almost still 70 something years. So these guys, uh, they stayed longer, né? they stayed longer. Okay. His theory is based on natural selection, survival for the fittest. Guys, this is natural selection. And natural selection is, is happening everywhere. Survival for the fittest. I repeat, his theory is based on natural selection. Natural selection means survival for the fittest. The best suit in uh, an environment will survive. And those which are not suit will die and then they will extinct. So now we are saying that organisms, he says, his theory, which is based on natural selection, it goes like this. He says that organisms produce a large number of offsprings. You see, check this rats. They produce a large number of offspring. Have you ever asked a question that you have never seen uh, butcheries for, for dogs? but you see butchers for, 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 for cows. But cows produce, they produce one kid or offspring per nine month. Dogs, they produce six or seven per six month, for example. But why is it that every day you slaughter cows, a lot of them, every day you don't slaughter uh, dogs. Why is it that you don't see a lot of dogs, but hey, cows are a lot? Eh? Why is it like that? So we are saying that, yes, though dogs produce a large number of offsprings, 
Why is it that they are not abundant everywhere? There must be other factors. It means that natural selection, natural selection must uh, happen or must uh, apply on these dogs so that the number are reduced. You have a lot of rats. Producers a number of rats, but where are the rats? You don't see them everywhere. There must be some factors which can, uh, which bring about uh, the reduction in the in the, in the uh, uh, availability of these rats everywhere. So we are saying that organisms produce a large number of offspring. So if you're not, you don't want to produce, make sure that you produce. So okay, there is a great deal of variation among the offspring. So look at this. This one, you see this color, it's another color, it's another color, it's another color. All these are coming from the same father, same mother, but they are different characteristics, meaning that there is variation among organisms of the same species. So number one, organisms produce a large number of offsprings. That's number one. Number two, there is a great deal of variation among the offspring. Number three, he says that. Some have favorable characteristics and some don't have. Some have favorable characteristics, yes, meaning that those characters, they can help them to survive. Some don't have favorable characteristics. There are so many kids who want to join our class, but they don't have favorable characteristics. They don't have the data. Maybe they don't have the nice phone to connect, but others do have. Those who have, they have connected and they're in class with us, even if they are home. And those do, who don't have, they are not class, so they are wiped out. That is what we call natural selection. So now we are saying that when there is a chance in environmental condition, so when the environmental condition changes, so when there is a change in environmental condition, or even competition, there is competition for food, for example, competition for space. Yes, uh -huh, what happens? Organisms with a favorable characteristic will survive. So the organisms with a favorable characteristic will survive. And organisms without favorable characteristics will not survive. So it means that those without favorable characteristics, those with uh, unfavorable characteristics, they will die. And the organisms with the favorable characteristics survive, while organisms without favorable characteristics, they will die. Those which have nice phones with internet, they will connect, they will survive. And those without, then the, for them, they will die. Meaning that they will be wiped out from the system. They won't study. You see now how natural selection does? Uh, those who are favorable, they continue with life. And then they're saying that organisms that survive reproduce. Because now they have the chance to survive then they reproduce and then they pass on the allele to the next generation so that it means that favorable characteristics will make people to survive and reproduce and then the characters which are good will be passed to the next generation so i repeat uh he said these are the observations he used number one organisms produce large number of offspring so whenever you explain you must include large number of offspring there is a great deal of variation whenever you explain this you must talk about this great deal of variation so in this case if they say that um giraffes explain giraffes you will talk about variation variation some have long necks some have short necks some have stripes some have have no stripes so that's the variation some are big some are small that's the variation there is a, a great deal of variation among the organisms some uh, have favorable characteristics and some don't have. So, for example, if I want um, uh, a giraffe with long neck, those which have long necks, they will survive. They have favorable characteristics. That's the characteristic the nature wants. And then, if there is a change in environmental conditions whereby the food is only on the top trees, yes, what happens? Now, the giraffe with the long necks, which have the favorable characteristics, they will survive because they will eat the food from the tall trees. And those with the short necks, they will die because they won't have what to eat. They have unfavorable characteristic. And then you are saying that um, giraffes that survive, yes, those which survive will reproduce in numbers. They will reproduce and then they pass their genes to the next generation. It means that now uh, the giraffes with the long necks will pass their genes to the next generation because they have food. Uh, 
Uh, when we come back, we are going to look at uh, this question, uh, account uh, or write an account showing how Darwin would explain the development of the long neck in the modern Jira. How, yes, we saw how Lamarck for the use and this use of the structure and inheritance of acquired character, use those um, laws to explain that. But now Darwin used the concept of natural selection. Those with the favorable characteristics will survive and those without favorable characteristics, they will die. So how did he use this concept to explain um, this?